All right, so that was the first part. That was the, the overview over the API. Um, now we'd like to go into more details regarding um, the fundamentals um, of uh, coding in BADA. Now that is really very important and uh, simple at the same time. So I would like to, to take some time and especially discuss the first two exception handling and two-phase construction because this is really relevant and extremely helpful once you understand it. Regarding exception handling, well, you all know Standard C++ uh, provides a very convenient way of uh, exception handling. But when we decided, to, when we started um, designing BADA, uh, we actually decided against it. And the reason for this is because it's a quite heavyweight mechanism. And we're talking about, uh, we're talking about mobile handsets, which are embedded systems and which are still resource restricted. So we wanted to find another way uh, a lightweight way in order to deal with exceptions. And the solution is pretty easy, actually. So what we came up with is our own proprietary or specific uh, return type, which is the result type. You can see that up here. And methods can um, return this result type, and then, we, and then you can actually um, query this result type. And based on this, you can then um, identify if an exception happened or not. So there, is, there are various different um, result, result types uh, obviously available. I just put out uh, on this slide three examples. The first one is, well, success when everything went fine. Another one is out of memory, which is pretty obvious when, when you had not enough memory. And system when some sort of system error occurred. So there is a huge list of different error types and you can um, query against these. So how does that look like in a bit of code? Well, as an example, I took out a method called uh, start preview, which is a method um, of the uh, camera class. And this method returns as a, as a return value um, the type result. So we store that in the variable r, and that is pretty easy. You just query the value of r, and if that is failed, you can process the error condition, and if not, you can just continue normally. Um, there is another case when uh, a method does not return um, our specific return value, but something else. Like in that case, we have a method called read n that returns a pointer to, to an object. Uh, in that case, we can still um, capture the, the uh, exception if we if if this returned object uh, is null, then we can make use of a, of a method called get last result. And this one actually returns then the um, exception that happened. All right, so that was exception handling, uh, how we do it in BADA. And strongly related to this is another concept, uh, what we call the two-phase construction. Now, um, well, you all know when you would like to construct an object, you, what you do is you, you need the constructor. Now, since the constructor doesn't have a return value, we cannot use our BADA mechanism to um, check if an exception happened. The second possibility would be to throw an exception within the constructor. Now, we can't do this because we don't support standard C++ exception handling. So we had to think, of, we had to think about um, how we can solve this problem. And what we came up with is, again, a quite simple way. Um, we structure now this process of constructing an object into two phases. So in the first phase, uh, we just create an object, and in the second phase, we allocate the memory. And to show this in an, in an example, so as I said, in the first phase, we just create an object, in that case um, of type call manager, and in this first phase, no memory is allocated for the member variables, so nothing can go wrong. And just in the second phase, then, we actually construct or initialize the object, which means that in this phase, we allocate the memory. And if something goes wrong, um, we get the, uh, the exception stored in our variable called r. And then we can, of course, um, check this variable r. And if something went wrong, we can do the appropriate actions. Now, um, the whole API, the whole BAR API, follows this pattern. Now, you as a developer, you don't have to follow that, but for obvious reasons, that is uh, strongly recommended. Right, yeah, so as I said, 
So these two concepts, um, exception handling in BADA and the two-phase construction, are quite essential ones. And once you've, you've understood this, you've already made huge um, progress. Another idiom I would like to discuss is uh, memory handling. Well, this one is pretty obvious. So if you uh, create an object, uh, if you construct an object, you, as the owner of that object, are obviously responsible for um, freeing the memory again, which is deleting the object. Now, there is a, a specialty in BADA, which we call the, the end postfix notation. So whenever there is a method like these listed down here, which has a trailing N, that means that the ownership of the object um, changes. So actually, the caller of the method uh, becomes the owner of the returned object, and he has to deal with um, deleting that object again. Now, to make that a bit more tangible, I have some uh, code here as well. Um, there is one example called uh, getContentInfoN. That is a method that actually um, connects to a remote server and gets some information from that. So what you get back is this uh, point object. And because there is this um, trailing N, that means that you, as the caller, are then responsible for dealing with that um, return values. So we have to delete that object. And the very same is true for the second example, which is a method called uh, on landmarks received N. So that means that method um, queries a remote uh, server again and wants to get some points of interest, or landmarks in that case. And again, um, what you get back, so when, when you get something back, you're responsible for, for dealing with that object. Right, and the fourth and last concept I would like to discuss in that section um, is the so-called virtual path. Um, virtual path is a very handy concept because um, it actually abstracts away from uh, the physical file system. So you have a virtual file system on, system on top of that, and you only have to mess around with that virtual one, which is always the same. So we have uh, folders like slash home, slash home share, and all the rest of it. And that's always the same, no matter on which uh, platform you are. So if you are developing on the simulator or on the Wave device or wherever, it's basically always the same uh, virtual path, and you don't have to differentiate different cases. 